Stewart Media and Entertainment presents the Two Live Stews Experience. We back, show. This right here, this ain't your ordinary ish. Two Live Stews Experience, Ryan Stewart, Doug Stewart, baby, we back. Ooh, yes, we are back. <laughs> it's been a long time. We shouldn't have left you, but them folks sat us down forcefully. Are you, are you, are you? What up to the cues? Do not let anyone confuse you. The Two Live Stews started this shit. Eh? The Two Live Stews Experience, shouty. If you're not stewing, what the hell are you doing? Breaking news right now, we're following the Department of Homeland Security conducting a raid at a house in Holmby Field Hills, believed to be connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say, less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up the street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those Bearcats and law enforcement. On the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is part of Bad Boy Entertainment. And the home in particular is registered not only to Bad Boy Films, but to one of P. Diddy's daughters. They are heavily... Is, is this what we gonna do, man? This what we gonna do? Hey, man. Uh -huh. We got breaking I only, news? I only work here, man. Huh? I only work here. What breaking up, though, man? Two live, stews, two live stews, Doug Stewart, Ryan Stewart. The Two Live Stews experience going down right now on your computer, in your home, wherever you are. We do appreciate y'all for hanging out. I'm your boy, Ryan, and that's Doug. That's not a good look, sir. So, well, That is well, not a good look, sir. It's definitely not a good look. And so for people just joining us right now and, and checking out the beginning of the show, the, the feds, was it the feds? Homeland Security, sir. Yeah, pretty much the same thing as the feds, I guess. They raided look, Puffy's houses, one in L.A. and one in Miami. At the exact same time, the one in L.A. and the one in Miami got hit at the exact same time. And you heard the lady just now saying in the report that, I think it was TMZ, I'm not sure. But she just said that they got there to cover it before the tape was even put out. So the word is on the street that they was about to raid Puff Crib. Okay? I, I, and that's, I the, that's the first part. Hold on, hold on. And last part before I go. Allegedly, man, if what she just said is correct, the house is in his daughter's name, man. Wait a minute. I, I, don't, I, I don't understand the significance of that. What do you mean? You suck. Black people got to stop putting things in their kids' name, man. That's what I mean. That's that's the moral of that story. Black people, stop it. This man stop putting like bills in your kids' name. Stop putting houses in your kids' name. Stop putting cars in your kids' name. Black people, y'all got to stop it. This man is like a billionaire or almost a billionaire. Why he got to put his or, house or, on his name? Or is he? Or is he putting houses in kids' names? Okay, or so is he? Slow down. Slow down. And you're watching the two live stews experience. No, no, Doug I'm Stewart pissed off. I'm pissed off, man. Doug Stewart and Ryan Stewart. Hey, man, do you not mad forget, as hell. Do, do you not remember that magnificent night we kicked it with Puff Daddy? I knew I shouldn't have gotten that limo. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have gotten that limo. We told the story before. This was one of the greatest nights of my life. Now, uh, looking back at it, I'm happy no, no real freak shit popped off. I'm very happy of that. <laughs> Nothing popped off. It was Nothing. totally innocent. We Nothing. went to like five Atlanta nightclubs, like in and out. Phenomenal hey man, night, man. Listen, that's the first time I ever really experienced a walkthrough. You know, we would pull up and get out and go straight in. I yes. mean, 
they wouldn't patting us down or nothing, you know. We would just like do a lap around the building and go right back out, get in the car, and go to the next spot, man. So for the people that don't know the story, uh, Ryan Cameron, like kind of like a mentor to us in the radio business here in Atlanta, he was Shout doing to you, something Ryan. with Puff that weekend or whatever the case may be. And Ryan called us up. He was like, "Hey, yo, y'all want to hang out with Puff? Do we? <laughs> Where do we need to be at?" So we met them at like a mall parking lot. Am I right about Hold that? On. Real quick, you do know that allegedly this is a sex trafficking case, right? Right, but no, nothing popped off when we was with them. This was 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. I, I, I'm uncomfortable. I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. Man, nothing, you go ahead and we, talk. Nothing happened. So anyway, Listen. Ryan says, meet us at, uh, you know, this mall parking lot. We met him at this mall shopping, you know, uh, place or whatever we parked our cars and all of a sudden this big limo rolled up and all you heard was take that take that in the background <laughs> take that, take that. <laughs> and the and the limo rolls up we jump out of the car the door opens up we step in the car and there's puffing air and champagne bottles and ryan cameron and we go out and i mean we kick it all night and you're right like all of these clubs we went to had secret interests right that's right that, that the average man never sees and i, I was I, just wild that i could see them <laughs> well and, and we were pretty high on the pecking order back then man but i did not know about those entrances and i was very pissed off about that but anyway right yeah you man it was a great in a night. line all night long and they got secret entrances <laughs> right this ain't good man you do know that when the fbi the dea or gbi or Homeland Security knock on your door, mm -hmm. that the work on the case is already done. They've already got everything they need to lock your behind up. You know that, right? So he he here's what I'm thinking. Here here's what's in my mind when I hear this, and you're watching the two live stews experience. Two things, either something going on with this, this sex trafficking thing, mm. or, 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 Many years, these allegations of him having something to do with, with Biggie's death. Now, that's well, all this is speculation. It, it's, a, it's all alleged. It's speculation. We don't know anything. And, and I hope it's not true. Let me say that for the record, because I don't want nobody going and saying Sue's talking shit about Puff, and he, he set them out all night long. No, I'm very grateful for the night we kicked it with you, brother. But what I'm talking about, <laughs> what I'm talking about is the allegations, and they're kicking this man doors in. That doesn't look good. And apparently, allegedly, that was one of his kids that they was hauling out with the hands behind his head. Right, yeah, I saw that. I, I, I read that. I read Oh, that. my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This is disgusting. Nothing popped off when we hung out with the dude. It was, it was one of the greatest nights of my life. I tell everybody about that night, man. I mean, endless moe? <laughs> well, I, well, I, I think endless it's moe? I, I, I think it's et. I think it's et. Mo no, et, I, I, I don't think it's moe. I okay. think it's moe. Yeah. Well, listen. Move on, <laughs> move on forward. Whenever you tell this story, man, uh -huh. tell it just with yourself involved. Don't don't involve me in the story oh, anymore. Oh no, you were there. No, 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 no. Real now quick. Listen. We, listen we, no, we... no, 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 no. Real quick. We we gotta have an understanding here. <laughs> Moving forward, <laughs> when telling this story, cut me out, man. I'm I'm out. I don't want nothing to do with it. Cut I'm you out. out. Cut you I'm out. I'm out. Okay. I'm done. All right. All right. You, Ryan Cameron, and Puff had the night of y'all's lives. Good for y'all, man. Don't Epstein me. And where were you at? No. Where were you at? You was I home? was I was home. I was I'm, I'm a father of three kids, man. I was home. <laughs> I'm a father of three too. Daughters. Oh, shame on you for hanging Come out. Oh man. Yeah, shame, shame on you. Come on, man. Shame on you. Mm -mm. Not a lot of people walking this 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 earth can say they kicked it with with with, with Diddy. <laughs> well, listen, like, man. Hard. Listen, man. Tree, come um, on for a second, Tree. You, tree, keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tree. Uh, we want to welcome into the into the studio with Let's the Stewies right. and the Stewettes, the lovely EP of the show, Tree Taylor. How you doing today, Tree? Good evening. I'm All gonna. Right. All right. All right. All right, Doug. What do you want Tree for? Go ahead, man. I this over with. Tree. I just you keep you keep doing like this, like. What's because you keep repeating things right. that could be held against you it's, in a right. court of good. law. That's right. Listen to her. Yeah, we went Please. Listen to her. We, we just got started. started. I don't want to get, I don't want to, I mean, we just got back. We ain't do right. nothing. Come on. Trust me, we did something. If we did something, yeah. 
It'd be a I different want, story. We didn't I do love anything. your backgrounds tonight, gentlemen. You look so. Thank you. It, this is amazing. Yeah. I'm at the bar. My dream. I'm at the bar. Yeah, me too. I'm at the bar. You're at a different bar. I'm at a bar a too. Bar. Right. I'm at a different bar. We're both in the road, and we found the best spot with the best sound that we could do our show from because you know we take this thing very serious. Um, and where we're traveling, if it's on a Monday or a Thursday, we're still going to do our during shows. As a matter of fact, I got people asking, are we going to uh, increase the workload and do a third show during the week? Right. Okay. What do you think? We'll see. We'll see. Um, that means shouts no. Shouts out to everybody. Whenever, whenever, that... whenever Ninja says that, that means no. <laughs> shouts out to everybody that tuned into the show last week, Thursday. We had a lot of fun. Uh, but obviously, my sound wasn't up to par. I was on the road. But that'll never happen again. It'll never happen right. again. Right. And uh, we appreciate the love. Shouts out to Southern Edge Beverage Company, Southern Edge Beverage, CO.com, sweet tea flavored vodka, and salt to caramel flavored whiskey. Sponsorship opportunities are available. Available. Um, have you ever done radio sales? Email me, okay? Email me, sme.dougstreet at gmail.com. Uh, we're looking for salespeople, okay? And we're looking for members of the team. So email, email me and, you know, let's talk. Let's talk. We're doing big things over here. Uh, a lot to talk about, man, uh, in the world of hey, sports. But, but, let me say one more thing before I forget. Let me say one more thing before I forget. I'm listening. So Southern Edge commercial is fire! It is. Where, where has that been? They just shot that? Uh, no, it's, I mean, we've been trying to get things done the right way, man. And I think we had it before, and the sound wasn't up to par. So Tree said that she wasn't going to do it until it was up to par. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to par. Yep. Oh, so man, that's was, fire. Yeah, yeah, it, and who's the dude man. rhyming on there? Who's the dude rapping on there? Uh, that we've kid's got, got several, a future. We've got several artists, sir. Uh -huh. We've got several artists, man. Rappers, singers, um, actors. Everybody wants to get down, man. Okay. People sending us music. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, shouts out to the great Pee Wee from MoCo and uh, Joey AKA from MoCo. BMX. BMX, yeah. yeah. We're going to get yeah. some of his music and play some of his music. Um, James, a.k.a. Naughty Dread. He's got mm -hmm. some people that's got some music that they want us to play. So, yeah, we're, we're putting it all together, man. Putting okay. it all together. Okay. Shouts out to everybody it's in the, uh, the chat room. Is this uh, when you talk about the top five? Is this when you talk about the top five? Huh? Is it top five time yet? We usually we talk about the top five by now, right? Where's the booing studio audience when they want? No, uh, man. Uh, no, when, usually, when we want them. Usually we talk about the top five now, right? Isn't it time for the top five? All right. Uh, so don't we, old, don't, don't we go to the last top five first? Isn't that how it works? Yeah. So old news. Let's talk about old business. Old business. Okay. We did the top five Atlanta rappers of all times. And we kind of put my list against Ryan's list. Um, Ryan's list was go back to it one more time, Tree. Ryan's list was my list was first, Ninja. My list came in first. I won. I got my first <laughs> victory, baby. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes. Come on, man. I was gonna Listen, only revisit only it. Going, only going up from here. Only going up from here, sir. I got my first dub. I'm now one in five, and I'm looking to be two and five after tonight's show. All right, go ahead, man. What are you going to do? Go ahead. No, no. I was going to just go over your list and my list so people could remember, people that don't know about this poll thing that we did. Your yeah. list was number five, Killer Mike, number four, Future, number three, Jeezy, number two, T.I., and mine, and uh, number one, Andre 3000. And yep. mine was number five, Gucci Mane, number four, CeeLo Goody from the Goody Mob, Luda, T.I., number two, and... What? Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Who wants to hear about this sucky list? You so, guys are right. Thank so you. Let's put let's you put a right. cherry let's put a cherry on top of this. You won fifty one percent to forty nine percent. Whoa, one percent. A win is a win is no, a win, sir. You actually got fifty percent. How do you get fifty percent and I not get fifty percent? This is uh, flawed. How do I get forty nine? Oh, you got it, you got a couple extra it, votes. It wasn't an even amount of votes. It was like fifteen thousand votes to like twelve thousand votes. So yeah, it goes my way. Yep. Okay. It goes so my your, way, man. If that's your first victory, so it's five to one right now. And real quick, five, man, I'm up five to one on the polls. Real quick, man. Okay. If there was a poll to be won, it's a poll that we're talking about hip hop and Atlanta rappers. I would want to win that one. The polls that you've won in the past are about polls that are irrelevant. People don't care about those polls. But about hip hop and R and B in Atlanta, oh, okay. the people voted with me. They sided with me, sir. Yeah, one percent. Three extra yeah. people out of eight thousand people, and you're yep. happy about that. You're pounding your chest about that. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. That's right, man. Feel really um, good. So there's another poll that we're going to get to. We're going to roll that poll out a little bit later. 
okay. lot to talk about. This is what we do on Mondays, Ballers and Busters. We're bringing it back. Mm -hmm. We're bringing yep. back Ballers and Busters. So yep. we posted yep. in the chat group earlier today. Give us your Ballers and Busters for the weekend. You got a baller you want to start us out with, sir? Your first baller, your first buster? How you want to do it? My first baller of the day today, sir, will be going to North Carolina State, DJ Burns, the big man. Um, <laughs> had an outstanding game this past weekend. Uh, and the North Carolina State win is not why I want to talk about Mr. Burns, sir. Okay. The reason why I'm giving DJ Burns the Ball Award is because not only does he have like three NIL deals, I believe he's got a deal with CVS, a deal with um, Mount Olive Pickles, mm -hmm. and there's a third NIL deal he's got. But DJ Burns, the big man that is known for rebounding and blocking shots with NC State, has a line of vending machines on his own. Is it NIL connected? Not NIL connected, sir. So he's just a, a hustler. He's just a businessman. That's why he's getting my ball award. Okay. He's probably getting a couple mil from NIL deals. He's probably going to be playing on NBA courts here in the near future. But with his spare time, he runs a vending machine business at North Carolina State, sir. Wow. I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome that these kids get to hustle. I think it's awesome that with what he's got going on NIL-wise, with his athletics, while being at school, I think it's awesome, and it talks about the intestinal fortitude that he has to have a business on the side, hustling vending machine stuff. I, I remember really a story. Uh, Greg, you remember, you know, Greg Anthony, and and yes. speaking of which, our, our top five tonight is going to kind of consist of Greg Anthony. When he was at UNLV, he had a business too. I can't remember what it was right now, but he operated a business. business. That's business. what it was. That's exactly yes. what it was. That's and right. so he was making so much money from this TV business that he had to, at that time, he had he couldn't be on scholarship. So right. rather than take the free scholarship, the, the, the free school, he was like, nah, y'all keep that. Y'all keep making it. so much money with these t-shirts. I'll, I'll pay for good. my scholarship. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's um, big. That's big. That's one, that's one of the great stories with the UNLV Rebels, man. Them cats was hustling. Them cats was living in Vegas. And some people say, which we'll talk about it, that, that the game they lost to Duke, some people say they didn't go home crying because of that game, man. Yeah. That's, that's the word on the street. But we'll straight. talk about that a little bit later, man. Who's uh, your first I, ball or your first buster going my to My first serve? ball award goes to women's basketball, man. Can, can, can they get a round of applause? Yeah, women's no basketball, doubt about man. It. No doubt about it. In particular, no about it. in particular, Dawn Staley and them South Carolina Gamecocks dragging yep. everybody that plays. <laughs> that yeah. they play. Um, yep. They've won yep. their first two games an average of like 45 points. points. The first it's two uh, opponents yeah. that they had in the tournament. They yep. look unstoppable right now. And you know what? I didn't... Just... Go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, you, go, you you please go ahead. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting more attention and bigger numbers. And you talked about this last week than the men. The right. men are kind of okay. like in a funk okay. right now, man, as far uh, as... Uh, uh, college basketball and i agree i agree that uh women's basketball right now is is it okay i did not say i was going to i did not tell you i was going to do this okay and i i, I don't ever want to put you in the spot like you've done me with a couple of the top fives i don't ever want to do that what okay but i'm going to ask you a question and i'm okay. going to make a comment after i ask you said question when i say southern cal and juju mm -hmm. when i say Iowa and Caitlin Clark, when mm -hmm. I say your recent LSU, what ultimately comes to mind for you? Um, spotlight. Okay. Okay. Now, I want you to take I, I named I named three of the hottest names in women's college basketball just now, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In men's college basketball. Give me for two some, or three of them. For some reason you broke you you broke uh you broke up just now. Say it one more time. I didn't hear what you yeah. asked. I gave you the three hottest names in women's basketball. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I want you to give me. I see where this is going. I want you to give me two or three hot names in men's basketball. Mm. Co men's college basketball. Just, just mm. give me two or three, sir. Mm. And I watch games all weekend. I watch games all weekend. I found myself watching more women's basketball. I saw myself watching women's basketball longer. I, I found myself knowing some of the women's names. But while watching you know the guys play, I didn't see a ninja that I knew 
other than Baycock in North Carolina, and I, I did some research to find a few names, but, sir, there, there, there are no superstars that are being talked about in college basketball, it's funny, college basketball, like women's college basketball. It's funny you say Baycock because he's been around for 30 years. Him <laughs> uh, is probably the only name I could come up with. It's funny you bring this up. OK, and I really don't feel bad because I just saw, you know, Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce, Paul asked Paul Pierce. They do a podcast <laughs> and KG asked Paul Pierce the same thing. He couldn't name one. Right. So you're, right. you're, you're I mean, it is what it is right now. And I think some of it, some of it has to do with the NIL, um, with the portal. And on top of that, we had a couple of down years because of COVID. I think everything was thrown out of sorts and guys were transferring around and sitting out and, and I, I don't women, know. The women the, the, the women the women didn't deal with COVID? The women's game wasn't yeah. up, uh, uprooted? Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, 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 the women didn't have transfer portal going action going on? Jeff Look, King man, says, uh, 3PJ says, and I, I'm missing it. Yeah. He says, because men only stay one year, most women stay three plus years. I think they got to stay three plus. I think they got to play four. I think the women. The, I'm, I think not, the women I'm not sure. I think but the women have to have three plus to four years. Yeah, but I, I think. think I think that the best players in. I, I think he makes a pretty good point. I think the best players in men's basketball they go early. Man, three P don't know nothing. Don't don't give him no credit <laughs> for anything. Yeah. So yeah, he, man, he, they're he, hot right uh, now. After a little research, man, Zach Eady from Purdue. Mm -hmm. And and that's I I know center, these names that's because the center the player right. of the year. Okay, yeah. okay, very good, yeah. very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, big, big white Ryan, boy. Ryan Kalkbrenner from Creighton. I don't know who the hell Kyle, that is. Kyle Filipowski from Duke. No, Hunter you know I don't Dickinson know nothing about no damn Duke players. <laughs> Hunter Dickinson from Kansas. Tyler Kolick from Marquette. Wade Taylor the fourth from Texas A&M. Baycott, as you mentioned, Armando Baycott. He's been around forever. Um, those are the biggest names stat-wise. Right. Okay? But some of those guys, man, if you didn't – Again, they they're not known more than the women, sir. I, I'm sorry. It's it's a it's a different day and time, Fessa. A different day and time. Um, Buster Award to the hip drop tackle. That's my yes. first Buster Award. The yep. NFL banned that tackle. So most people have been watching the news, and this has been kind of like a conversation for a while. It's basically the move. It's, it's almost kind of like the the horse collar, but it's a little bit different. You're grabbing the player, and instead of uh, just, you know, riding them to the ground or push them to the ground. You jump up and let all your weight come down, and right. they're folding guys' knees and ankles well, you up. Don't, you don't jump up. You you just fall. You don't jump up. It's called oh, a oh, drop. Oh, you fall. You're right. You're right. right. Yeah, it's not, it's not a jump up tackle. It's a drop tackle. So, so the thing about this is I don't remember nobody doing this when we were growing up. But over the last couple of years, I've seen this. And you know me. I'm one of those purists. Oh, they taking every all of the hitting out of the game and the physicalness out of the game. I'm 100% on board with this. Like, I don't remember anybody doing that when we were growing up, tackling me with the football or you with the football. Nobody did that. We They tackled us. They brought us to the ground. Maybe we dragged them a little bit. But this stuff here is they had to get rid of it. Where are we going to draw the line, man? Um, um, this thing is moving closer and closer towards two-hand touch and yeah. um, or, or grabbing a flag. Uh, I, I, where are we going to draw the line, man? Now, I agree something needed to be done about this drop hip or whatever they call it, drop something tackle. Something needed to be done, man. But, I, 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 I mean, they're taking a lot of the aggression and a lot of the physicality of the game out. They're taking it out, man. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm opposed to it because people were getting injured a lot, but – where do we draw the line, sir? Yeah. All right. When we get back from the break, man, we're going to talk a little bit about Freak Nick, and then we're going to unveil our top five for today. This is a good one. It's kind of tied to – not kind of. It's tied to college basketball. Uh, we may take a call. We're going to read more of your chat. Ballers and busters, we got a lot going on, man, in this in this uh, episode of the Two Lives Dudes Experience. The Two Lives Dudes Experience sponsored and fueled by the good folks from Southern Edge. Make sure you check them out at southernedgebeverageco.com. Follow them on all social media platforms so you can be invited to the good times when we start putting the good times out there. Y'all keep it locked. The Two Lives Dudes Experience will be right back.
sponsorship opportunities are available. All right. You're yep. going to see some commercials, but we're telling you once again, and people like this, and I straight pull this from, uh, from uh, you know, a, a TV show or a movie, but the price today is not going to be the price tomorrow. It's as That's simple right. as that, man. That's a right. lot of people have been hitting us up. We're really just trying to come up with, 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 uh, with a fair package for everybody. Trying to, do, trying to you know? do things the right way, sir. Trying to do things the right way. And so if you are interested in advertising on the two live stews, I created a new email address, sme.dougstewart at gmail.com. sme.dougstewart at gmail.com. The price today ain't going to be the same <laughs> tomorrow, but I want to get in today. The two live stews experience, Doug Stewart, Ron Stewart. Sponsorship opportunities are available. All right. We're looking for experienced radio sales people. Jump aboard right now. There's a lot of money out there to be got. All right. Because we promote the heck out of our sponsors and they know that. We've had sponsors in the past that we would love to reconnect with as well. That's right, baby. It's the Two Lives Tuesday Experience. Doug Stewart and Ryan Stewart. I forgot to ask you, what you, uh, what'd you do this weekend? Um, look, man, because of the, the, the water and the rain, soccer was rained out all weekend long. Mm. So this weekend, me and wifey and the kids were in the house all weekend, man. Y'all chilled out. Oh, my gosh. It was the first time in a long time where we absolutely did nothing. Mm. Okay. Now, um, um, uh, Mason's game on Sunday did end up being played. So, we drove out to Harris County for his game on Sunday. But after that, came right back to the house, grilled some food, man, and ate. But but uh, late this weekend, I've had in a very, very, very long time. Watched a lot of basketball, women's and men's. Um, so, you know, I went down to Houston, H-Town. Baby girl had a track needed uh, at home at Prairie View she, A&M. She lit that track on fire. You saw the video, right? I saw the video. She she back, man. Um, I hate I hate to even talk about it, but she had a real tough time her senior year. Like her scholarship and all her personal records were done in her junior year. Okay, senior year they were thrown off with COVID. You know, homeschool. They didn't have their track. It, it sounds like excuses, but long story short, I think she's back to what she was when she was a junior in high school. New awesome. PR this weekend. Came in amazing. second for the entire meet. Almost yeah. came in first, if you, if yeah. you watched the video. It was Man, close. just super proud of baby girl Kara Barra. Yeah. Can you give her a round of applause, yeah. sir? Can you give her no a round doubt. of applause? No doubt. No yeah. doubt, man. I, too, am very, very proud, man. Uh, I, too, am okay. very, very proud. Got got with my LB. We went and had a couple of drinks in Houston. Houston is cool. The great GC? Yeah, GC. Yeah, uh, went and had a couple of drinks with GC. Uh, the the highways in Houston, I think, might be worse than Atlanta, man. When I say when uh, I say worse, I'm talking about people driving excessive speeds with no regard for their life or anybody else's life, man. Them and it's like are horrible. It's like there's no state troopers out there either. It's like they just get to drive like that. I don't think I saw one policeman. You're exactly right. You're exactly yeah. right. Yep. It's weird. It's really yeah. weird, man. Hey, uh, listen, we're going to give out the phone number. We're going to try to take a phone call, 404-954-1021, 404-954-1021. If you come on, make sure your internet is good. Make sure you don't have, like, uh, you, you need more space and it's bootleg and you freezing up and – it, it, oh, we're just going to shoot you off real quick. I mean, let, quick. let's just be honest about this. We're going to shoot right. you off real quick. Right. Um, right. So this past weekend, this past week, the Freaknik documentary came out. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Freaknik documentary came out. We said that we would both watch it and give our opinions tonight. W w what are your thoughts about the Freaknik documentary on, I think it was Hulu, produced by Uncle Luke? I'm just, I'm just happy they didn't catch a ninja like me hanging out, man. I'm just very glad. Listen, listen. Uh, I am very glad that the proverbial pants being down wasn't caught with me in that situation. That's, I'm, I'm being honest, man. Yeah. I, I can't start to tell you how much rabbit dancing I did 
on Freak Nick Weekend every year for like three or four years, man. I mean, so, so did you, uh, did on you 75, see any- on 85, on 20, um, behind the target? I mean, it was crazy, man. It was did crazy. You, did you see anybody in it that you knew? Several people. So you, 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 were, you, you had been in Atlanta. You've been to several Preakniks. I saw one person that I knew, the great really? Kamal. Who was it? Kamal. <laughs> you saw Kamal, right? One time, I still call Kamal magic, but one time to the great Kamal, man. I did see Kamal, yes. So yeah, I Kamal, saw teammates, man. I saw a few of the track girls from Georgia Tech. I saw a lot of people, man. So Kamal owns or had owned many strip clubs in Atlanta, and he played football with Ryan at Georgia Tech. Yep. And uh, they showed a little, like, clip of him, and that's the only person I saw that I knew throughout the entire thing. Oh, so, no, Okay, man. so what are your thoughts about a lot of people are kind of disappointed? I think they're disappointed because they thought it was going to be more raunchy. Here's my thing on that. I'll tell you what I think, and then I'll, I'll get your, your thoughts. All right. This thing was produced, or this thing was put together by Morehouse and Spellman alumni. Okay? Okay. Yep. Um. What did you think it was going to be? Like, Spellman well, and Morehouse people not going to put together some raunchy sex video okay. and, uh, and, and put their names behind it. Those people that go right. to those two universities are very, what's the word I'm looking for? Thorough and very professional. They're very professional. professional. Great, right. Professional is a great word. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that a bulk of It was the a true documentary. A true documentary that were also involved with Jermaine Dupree and Uncle Luke from down in Miami. Mm-hmm. So I really think that when people hear Uncle Luke and he's contributed to anything, they're thinking, you know, ass up, knees down. Right. And know? that's what he said in, 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 the, uh, in the show. He said he brought the freak to Freak Nick. So did, right. you know, did you know the history of the name Freak Nick before you saw this thing? I did. I did. Okay. Okay. So, I, I did. And, and maybe we shouldn't spoil it for other people that haven't seen it. But well, we, we hadn't said much. I mean, it, yeah, that's I no mean, big deal. It, it can't be but about so many things, man. So, they had the streets on lock. People couldn't get anywhere. At one point in time, they put barricades up so you would drive straight through all of Atlanta. I mean, yeah, you, we're not telling anything that anybody doesn't know. Yeah, but the, the, the way they came up with the name Freaknik, it was just a picnic, and they put Le Chic song, uh, Le Freak. I think it was called right. La Freak. You know, you remember that song? Freak. Freak out. Yeah. 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 That song. That song. And so they just, that, that's where they came up with the name. But, I mean, I thought it was pretty good. Everybody's killing it on social media. And the only reason they're killing it because they thought they were going to see more skin. Well, um, if man, they would have. people got grandkids, man. They can't right. be putting people faces all over and, America on some film. And if they would have made it too raunchy. It wouldn't have been able to be released on TV. Some people yeah. know what they were doing. Yeah, they, they, you couldn't see nobody butt cheeks in the air, man. That's just not going to be appealing to people that are making decisions, man. It's just and, not going to happen. And you know what? I it, the backstory of it was is that when the Olympics came in '96, it was bad timing because they were trying to make the city look good. Right. And the year before, my why one and only frequent was '95. Okay? okay. And like I said a couple of weeks ago when we talked about this before. I understand, as a 54-year-old man right now, I understand why they shut it down. But I didn't even think about the fact that the Olympics were coming in 96. They couldn't have that going on. They couldn't have that. They couldn't have Freak Nick as it stood in 95 and 96 when the world was coming to Atlanta. I get it. I totally get it now. I was mad as heck. I was calling Bill Campbell all kind of Uncle T and Uncle Tom this and this, that, and the other. He, he wasn't a responsible adult mayor. He did what he had to do. <laughs> hey, man, uh, looking back at it, there's, it went it went over too long. <laughs> you know, the, the fact that it went until 96 is, is, is kind of mind-blowing to me. I think a little bit of it, there were some traces of it in 97 also. But, yeah, man, uh, good times in our lives, man, back in the day. I mean, talk about a party that lasts all weekend. That is the – that that's that's Freak Nick personified. Tree, can uh, the you great come Tree on? Yeah, Tree, come in for a second. Okay, so a couple things. Uh, Thanks for having me. (laughs) First of all, it was, I didn't like the way that it ended. And also, 
I was really happy that they spoke about how all these other, you know, how the Caucasity has parties all over America. Uh, yeah. Remember, Good point. girls Good gone point. wild and all yeah. of this. And so um, I just felt like it ended on a sad note. I was I was just low seeing you know how it ended um because i only remember good times uh laying on floors in hotel rooms because we were 10 deep coming from detroit on value jet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 25 dollars so y'all flew y'all y'all flew from detroit you know we're up a little we're, we're a little bougie <laughs> but yeah Rose, i mean jayla and Rose talked about uh, um, borrowing a car and driving all the way down from detroit to atlanta is that his hair or is that a unit he wears? Okay. That's his that's his hair. That's his yeah, hair. but I don't, I, don't, I don't know what's going on up here. Though. I don't know what's happening here. But uh last thing, I just uh Luke oh, what I was gonna say is y'all don't be on the internet. Ryan, you mentioned that it would probably be too risque for TV. Do you go on Instagram every I day? Do. It's a pregnant girl or a girl yeah. that just had a baby with her behind yeah, bent over. Yeah, yeah. So, but, yeah. but but tree that's that's Instagram. That's not that's not a, a platform that's on TV. That that's Hulu and Paramount and Apple TV and Prime and all those people. If they were to post something like somebody's butt in the air doing it, rabbit dancing, it. it's not going to make it's not going to make the cut. It's, it's going to be on the cutting room floor. It's not going to be shown. Uh, tree and Tree makes a good point. After all of that what what we talked about, I agree with Tree. Caucasian spring breaks probably are just as wild or wilder. Did you Tony see what I'm water? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so it did. And remember, seem, and, 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 and remember, you've never, you've, ne you probably never gone to Daytona Beach when um what? the white folk go down there. We not, had, no, not, not, not when the white folk, not when the white okay, folk went. Well, no, I was we about went, to say we went to Black College Weekend on Daytona every year from '91 to '94. Every year. Okay. Yeah. I have I have gone to Daytona Beach with teammates of mine that are are Caucasian brothers. Uh-huh. And it's wilder than any free dick I've ever been a part of. Yeah, see, cause cause white folks it's, it's, it, well they they can do whatever they want and the police don't care. Not only black that people know they're gonna be policed. Right. White folks can they can be out in public doing whatever they want and, and it's like the cops act like they can't see anything. Right, right. And and you're one hundred percent right. And not only that, they, uh, they, they, they do these things because they know once again that they can make a call to somebody. And so I think part of it is the police kind of handle them differently because of the politics of the situation. Right. You're you're 100 right. right. You're absolutely right. right. But tree yeah. tree is 100 percent right. We, we get treated so different in the same circumstances. Okay. Uh, people were talking about Jones Beach, these, these different places where people had spring uh, break, uh, you know, events or whatever. How about, how about Black Bikers Weekend down in Myrtle Beach? And Myrtle Beach. Yeah. And and Black Bikers Weekend is gone too. For the most yeah. part, it's changed. Yeah. I think it's, I think maybe they still do it, but it's not black people. You know, it's anything not, that yeah, we do, right. they shut it down real quick. They shut it down. Now, yeah. for the record, um, Atlanta's got five million people in it, and the fact that you can't use the interstate is a problem. I I, I understand that's yeah, a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, but um, y'all don't say nothing to them folk down there in Daytona. I've been down there twice with them folk. I, I you know they they get to really cut loose. Yeah, and it's and it's okay. And they get slizzard, like oh, they don't they God. don't just get drunk. They get drunk drunk. I'm talking about falling out on sidewalks outside. I mean, puking on they self, like right, right, and 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 still and hanging out after that said puke. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. So I get it. I totally get it. Uh, you're watching the Two Lives Two's Experience. Doug Stewart, Ryan Stewart, uh, brought to you by Southern Edge. I want to mention this before I forget it. We have websites or links, okay, to our home pages on Facebook and on YouTube, okay? So 2 live stews, youtube.com 2 live stews, facebook.com So you don't have to worry about a link with all these mumble jumble words and letters or whatever. Very simple. Whatever your platform is, which one that you prefer, whether it be YouTube or Facebook, 2 live stews, youtube.com 2 live stews, facebook.com Subscribe on YouTube and follow on Facebook and pass the word. 
Uh, uh, let's see. Look who's in the chat room. Ashley Scott. Lying, up, Doc? <laughs> lying on the floor was pitching differently in my head. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Uh, <laughs> Jeff King, he says, they will get you faded. He's talking about Caucasians. Eddie Jewell, uh, or, or it just passed right by us. But thank you for all of the messages in the uh, in the chat room as well. Yeah, man, we got pulled over driving down to Daytona, and the car was, let's just say, um, let's just say there was smoke in the car, okay? Cheech and Chong. Okay, Cheech and Chong is, let's just say Cheech and Chong, okay? Right. Uh-huh. And I'm thinking the minute I saw the lights, oh, man, um, I'm going to be the only one that gets shot when he pulls, when he, when he pulls his car over, right? Mm, I'm it's thinking, sad you got to uh, think like that. Well, I, I, well, it's sad, but... yeah. The cop gets to the window, they're down the window, and the cop goes, Whoa, guys, guys, what's going on in there, right? My buddy that was driving the car, a Caucasian brother, starts laughing like, oh, we're going down to Daytona Beach, officer. You know how it gets down there. We're just doing a little pregame in the car. All right, guys, I'm going to need you guys to slow down. I'm going to need you guys to take your time and make sure you keep them seatbelts on. Y'all be careful. Have fun down in Daytona. And that was it? That was it, man. Y'all was cheating and chonging and he just let you go because some type of country boy talk? Cheating and chonging, open containers. And the driver was sober. The driver was straight sober, wasn't doing anything. And everybody else in the car was going for it. You guys be careful. Make sure you keep your seatbelts on and have your nice time down there in Daytona. Y'all be careful. Now, slow that thing down. And I look at them like, is that it? You, you, wait a minute, is that it? Right. Hey, wait a minute, aren't you going to make us get out of the car? It was it was crazy, man. Wow. Yeah, it, two differences. Two differences. Yeah, yeah. All right, so listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about a kind of follow-up on this Shohei Otani story. Okay. Um, since it's got a couple of different layers. My opinion hadn't changed at all. We'll talk about it when we get back from the break. We are brought to you by Southern Edge Beverage Company, southernedgebeverageco.com. We got the flyest spirit commercial in the world. It's dope. Like, it's really dope. Like, like that commercial is dope as hell. Hey man, Dr. Scott ain't pulling no punches, man. He's nah, putting he it all in the around. line. He wants this thing to work. It's going to work. Y'all make sure you follow them on all social media platforms as well. So when we start doing things in these streets, you can know how you can be a part of it, man. So you get Edge, it. That's, Edge, why, that's, that's why we're sitting in, uh, in a bar live right now because we're in a bar right now drinking Southern Edge. All exactly. about business, sir. All about yep. business. Y'all keep it locked, man. More Two Last Two's Experience up next.
so sweet. Two live students experience. Doug Stewart, Ryan Stewart, back at you. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Your boy Ryan and uh, him over there is Doug. The show is being produced by the great Tree Taylor. Uh, no entertainment report tonight. The great Arlie Wood is traveling, but when she gets on site a little bit later this week, um, she's going to come in and do a show, hopefully. So, you know, we'll, we'll kind of have... we'll kind of replace Arlie's report with this talk about our new top five. Does that work okay. for everybody? I love it. That yeah, makes total let's sense. Let's do that. Um, quick message in the chat room from Country Roads. He says, Asians ain't miscount $4 million. That ain't racist. That's max. <laughs> So Shohei Otani yep. comes out and talks today for the first time since this whole "quote unquote" scandal broke, and now and he doesn't speak a lick. He doesn't speak a lick of English now. Nah, he was trying. He was trying to speak English before, okay? But now, as of the last week and a half, he don't speak a lick of English. Go ahead, man. I'm listening. Go ahead. Well, I, 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 I'm gonna give him some leeway on that. Maybe he felt like that the he he's not a perfect speaking English speaker. So he felt like maybe something would get lost in translation. Translation. Okay. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. All right. You okay. So he had his new interpreter out there today, and they addressed this whole scandal about his former interpreter, you know, losing $4 million and that he didn't pay off the debt for him. He had no idea his agent stole $4 million from him. Now. Right. If you watch this interview, not not agent interpreter, not agent interpreter. His interpreter, yeah, okay, okay. I said agent. Okay. His interpreter, yeah. okay. If you watch this interview today, it really wasn't an interview; it's basically a statement because they didn't take any questions or anything. You know what they did? He actually took one or two questions, and maybe they yeah. were already they knew what the questions were going to be. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but they lying. I I really believe that they lying. I believe that they are lying their asses off. Okay? I believe Shohei is lying his asses off. See, what happened is they responded first, and they got their wires mixed up as far as what the explanation was. Initially, they were saying that Shohei paid off this debt for the guy. Where did that even come in at? Right. That shouldn't um, even have been part of it. They got their wires crossed well, on exactly what they were going to say. When they interviewed the interpreter for the first time, they put him in their room and he started talking and they snatched him out real quick. Right. He's the one that said that stupid stuff. Right. He said that. Shohei, he paid, he paid the debt off for me. He paid it off for me. I don't know why I'm giving my Mexican accent. Shohei, he, <laughs> paid, the, he paid the debt off for me. <laughs> um, no, Shohei's like, no, no, I didn't. No, I did right. not pay his debt yeah, off. Did not. I don't know yeah. anything about a debt. I don't think know anything yeah. about a bookie or nothing. And then he's, and he's, oh, he said, wait a minute, oh, my bad. Hang now, hang now. Then he changed his voice and started talking in Asian again. No, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. No? You can't do what you okay. just did just now. All right. Okay. Can, can we, can, we got a 10 second delay? <laughs> do we have a 10 second delay, Tree? Right. You went a little okay. bit too far. It's okay. Well, it's okay. No, she'll cut that I out. Did was, cut what out. I did was funny. Okay, okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. Um, No problem. <laughs> mark, mark that down, Tree. Let's cut that out. But all I all I was trying to say was he was talking English and then all of a sudden he went straight back to speaking Japanese. Like like out of nowhere. Like, oh, I forgot. No English, no English, no English. Right, right. Right. <laughs> right. So cancel uh, culture is real, huh? In let, 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 here's so we talked about this the other day. Let, let's let's look at this story from this aspect, man. Do you know the whole world has changed not only with NIL, with the portal? But now betting is accepted. It's, it's legal. It's legal. Uh, Sport uh, ESPN has a betting show. Right. Right. I, I think have a, that the have horse. A, they, go ahead. They have a they have a betting website. They have a betting website. A right. betting show. The right. horse is out of the barn as far right. as uh, it's kind of like taboo to talk about gambling in any form and have anything well, to do with sports. Them days are gone. That's what makes the situation happening in L.A. a little bit different for Shohei because California is one of the places where the gambling is not legal yet. And they were using an under-the-table bookie, which is another part of the problem. Mm. Yeah, keep that in mind. So you, you can't gamble in, in Los Angeles or in California. Um, so that's, a, that's part of the problem because he's not supposed to be doing that. Wow. Okay, so I didn't even know that part of it. Have you heard the story about Coach Bickerstaff for the Cavs said that he's been getting threatening 
calls about throwing games because these people that have been calling him, like, you know, anonymously have been saying and threatening him and his life and his family's life about, you know, throwing games or point shaving or whatever the case may be. Like, the world that we knew as far as sports betting and gambling and how it's intertwined with sports, now you got teams in Vegas. Like, the horse is out of the barn, sir. Horse like, this is – we can't go back now, and I think that you're going to start to hear a lot more of these stories about, you know, people being threatened like Coach Bickerstaff and about point shaving. I mean, think about it now, and, and it's much easier to bet today because of the things we've just been talking about than it was 30 years ago. Or 40 I've years ago. A, listen, man, um, I've got a guy that's got a website, and it's legal. I, I mean, it's 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 legal. Now, I don't dibble and dabble as much as I would like because I got three kids. Um, but a nickel here, a dollar there, you know, here, here and again. But, yeah, um, Pandora's box is wide the freak open, sir. Wide <sighs> open. It, betting is fun. I'm not going to even lie. Um, it is. And I stopped betting. And uh, it would be great if we had a, a, a betting sponsor that we could we could uh, uh, toss well, that out there. To that makes total sense. But I had a real horrible betting story, um, something that happened to me betting maybe it's probably 25 years ago. i never forget it. I bet on Clemson to cover a 30-point spread against Duke, and they covered the spread in the first half. In the second half, they put all their starters on the bench. They put all their starters on the bench, and Duke came back and scored a couple of late touchdowns, and they covered. And from well, that, I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done, done because yeah. you can't control something like that. Well, um, I got a buddy that that will always take a dog, and not a dog. Um, he will always take uh, the superstar team versus dogs. And I don't touch 25-point games. I don't touch 21-point games. That's too many points. The spread was 31 points, though, and they covered it in the first half. Right, but too many things can happen. Right. Right, like like them covering it in the first half and coach saying, okay, I'm taking everybody out. Yeah, y'all go back. After halftime, y'all go back out and y'all take your shoulder pads off. You know, that that can happen. That's exactly what happened to me. I don't don't play those games where the numbers are really, really big. I play games where I believe I've got an edge. I play games where I may know somebody in that city who said, Hey, man, I went to practice today, and -and so-and-so didn't practice all week. Oh, really? Okay, what's the point spread on that game? I'll touch games like that. Right. But games that's got a 30-point, 40-point spread, too many things can happen, sir. From Aaron, 018018, the Stews are amazing last week with shoe shows and this week's sports gambling. (laughs) Yeah, man, we do have – and I think sometimes we don't even notice it. We're still kind of sticking to the script of us being on terrestrial radio. We really can let our hair down, man, and really get loose ahead about the conversation. Okay, I, I'm glad you brought that up. It is the two lives dude. I, I two never really thought experience. about it until I just read that that comment. Doug Stewart, Ryan Stewart. After the first two shows, man, I called my pastor. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm being honest. I called you my told pastor. him, listen, pastor, you're not going to like what I'm about to say on these shows. I said, pastor, um, I'm torn, and I want to talk to you about this real quick. Uh-huh. He goes, okay, what you dealing with? And you do know that the kids was in the car listening to the show the other day, right? He listens to the show driving his kids to school. And you're listening so to I, the two live students experience. So I said, Pastor, um, and, and shouts out to, Re- to Reverend Terrence Albritton. Shouts out to, to, to Reverend T. Grady Baby. I said, I said, I said, Pastor, I'm torn about having the opportunity or the ability to curse and say whatever we want to say that comes to our mind versus on radio not being able to do that because of FCC, FCC rules. And he said, well, I just told you that. My kids listen to the show already, right? And you did drop one or two, but, you know, I'm sure you're not saying nothing that they hadn't heard before. Made right. me feel better. Made me feel better. And then he goes, hey, man, I'm going to leave you with this. God knows your heart. And he hung the phone up. God knows your heart. That's beautiful, So that's man. why. that's why I've decided I'm not going to let loose, man. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to show restraint. I'm going to be able to act like an adult, even though I, I don't have to. That's I, very I, big of you. Because I, I know my pastor kids are listening. I know my mom is listening. She, right. My mom, my mom said, yeah, I, I watch every show. She watches every show. That's what that's what she said. That's what she told me, man. I don't believe hey, that. Tree. Hey, don't welcome believe back, that. Tree. Ryan, Ryan. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. You are the same human that threw his glasses, threatened to go to Doug's house, 138 miles from yours, and then you left the show last week. Well, well, you know why I did that? So I wouldn't talk like a sailor. <laughs> That's why I did that. I don't want y'all hearing me talk like a sailor. I mean, and my, my kids are outside the studio walking around doing stuff. They don't need to hear daddy dropping F-bombs just because he can. They don't, need me, they don't need to hear me talking about women's uh, uh, genitals just because I can. Yeah, you said vulva last week. I haven't heard that since well, the, since that's the a sixth technical grade. term. I say testicles too. That's a technical term. Vulva. That's what they're teaching. That's what they're teaching sex ed. That's what they're teaching the health classes. Right. Yeah, but but I don't I don't want to be the guy that that doesn't show restraint or control, man. I want to be I want to be in control. Right. I'm a different person than I was 12 years ago, man. That's good for you, man. That's real good. And I'm gonna try to do the same thing. God knows my heart too, man. And my temper. Uh, from Chuck <laughs> D. I saw Mama Stu in the chat. Stu's mom w- or was was her hand. <laughs> no. And speaking of which, man, I don't think our mother watches this show like this. Uh maybe this isn't the place to talk about this, man, but I think our mother is addicted to TikTok. It's Facebook. And TikTok. She's expanded. She's Facebook. She was Facebook. Now it's TikTok. Like every minute of the time that I spent with her two weeks ago when I went down there, she's down like this. <laughs> and every once in a while I say, Ma, Ma, Ma. She, huh? And she'll look at me. Our, our mother's addicted to TikTok, man. Listen, man. Um, and I hope nobody tells her this. I hope she's not watching. I really don't think she watches like you she said. She says she watches every show. I think okay? she's got a problem. I um, think she's got a problem. For the record, man, it's very addictive. I it have to is! Police, I have to police myself. I have to police myself, especially in the mornings and at night. Okay? during the, in, in, in the morning time, I'm thinking... Man, there's got to be something else I could be doing that's productive than laying in this bed and not doing anything. Maybe I, maybe I need to start reading my Bible. Maybe I need to do my morning meditation. But but um, I can find myself in that bed first thing in the morning glued to Facebook and or TikTok or Instagram. It's not good, man. So I, I brought myself big time. I brought both of them back for purposes of the show and marketing the show. I took TikTok and Instagram, and you're watching the Two Live Studios Experience. I took TikTok and Instagram off my phone because exactly what you just said. I found myself on Sunday mornings pulling up the phone. The first thing I do is right there on the on the nightstand, grabbing the phone, and before I knew it, an hour and a half had passed by. Just like that. An hour and a half passed by. I just took like them that. off my phone. Yeah. And I said yep. that to Ma the other day when I was down. Yep. I was like, Ma, you. Yep. You like that TikTok, huh? I didn't say right. you need to get up that TikTok. You addicted. I didn't say anything like that. <laughs> you I can't said, talk to her like that. You like that TikTok, huh? And she just looked at me and said, oh, yeah. Well, and mm-hmm. also, man, she's retired. Ain't got no job to go Living to. Living her best life. Living her best life. So why not? I mean, and it's very entertaining. You, I mean, you can literally laugh if you scroll up and down. You can literally have a couple of laughs every 30, 45 seconds. Something funny is coming through that screen, sir. Yeah, I, 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 I said to her, I was like, Mom, I mean, you could walk. You could do some walking. <laughs> she does that. She does that three days a week. Yeah. She goes to the school and walks. Yeah. She does that. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, you're watching the Two Lives Two's Experience, Doug Stewart, Ron Stewart, brought to you by Southern Edge Beverage Company, southernedgebeverageco.com. We got the best commercials in the game. Southern Edge yeah. got the best commercials in the game. Uh-huh. Um, we're also going to get to kind of like an ode to college basketball. I mean, there's no hiding it. And I feel like like when we get back in the groove of this sports thing, you know, we'll be in in all of the, 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 the stories with sports like we were when we were doing radio full time. I really don't know a lot about college basketball, man, about the kids, you know, outside of a few names. But we have a remedy for that. We're going to talk about college basketball from an old school standpoint. And we're going to give our top five college basketball champions of all time. And we're going to have the Stewie's vote on that as well. I I think I got you on this one. See, the problem with you and these types of things, I'm going to give you a little heads up. You my bubba. Okay. Okay. It's going to be hard for you to beat me in something like this. Even though you got your first win, it was by 1%, okay? 
it's gonna be hard for you to beat me in something like this because I'm older than you and I remember these things. I have a very bad memory. You're a greenhorn, you know, you were a- wearing diapers when a lot of this stuff was going on. I have a very so, bad memory. Yeah, well, no, it's not that. It's just that when this stuff was going on, you were young. So when we come back, we're gonna roll them out. Uh, I'm very excited. I haven't heard yours. I'm on a one week winning streak, sir. It uh-huh. will continue. Okay, all right. It will continue. Maybe we'll try to grab a call. We'll read some more chat. It's a ball and buster Monday. We haven't really talked. Keep forgetting. We got to talk more about balls and busters on Monday. We'll get to it. Uh, I'll give you a buster real quick. Um, Kim Mulkey, the LSU head coach. Yeah. The more and more she talks, the more and more pissed off I get. I don't like her at all. She they won uh, a big game. LSU won. I mean, they, they went down to the wire. You know, um, well, the first half was kind of competitive. They played but against into the Middle second Tennessee half, State. They, yep, they ended up blowing Middle Tennessee State out. But, you know, with like 12 minutes, with about five minutes to six minutes played in the second half, it wasn't looking good for them. It really mm-hmm. wasn't, but they put it together. But I am not a Mulkey fan at all. I, I just think she's – I get bad vibes from her. Very so it's a big vibes. story uh, starting right now, coming out right now. Um, Kim Mulkey said that there's a reporter in the uh, Washington Post. Post, yep. Um, you know, putting – about to put out a salacious story about her. They never really said what it's about. She's just not happy about it. Well, and she's talking got cash-ish. Her, it's something that's got her panties all up in her butt. <laughs> All up in a wad. <laughs> All up in a wad. She's, she's very upset. And and usually, if that's the case, there must be some truth to it. Hey, Tree, turn the music up. We got to go to a break. Don't okay, go away. Doug Stewart, Ryan Stewart, very happy to be back. Spending some time with y'all, man. There's a lot going on. I'm Ryan, and he is Doug. I think it's more popping at my bar. The bar I'm at is way more popping than your bar. <laughs> your bar looks like it's about to close. <laughs> <laughs> I am the uh, I am the only one in the bar. Right. As they shut it down and won't let anybody else in because they don't want the show to be disturbed. And that show is the two live stews experience all right so how are we gonna do this man so we're gonna give okay in honor if of we're doing, if we're doing anything top five related because i won the last <laughs> top five we'll do it the way i want to do it 
That's so, the first thing. So, so this is how it's going to be? You got one for, win out of for, six. For the record. For and this is how it's going to be? Go ahead. Go ahead, Shut sir. up. Shut up, loser. Shut up. Yeah. If it's time to do the top five, you need to fall back and let me lead how we do it. All right? Now, what I want you to do is go ahead and say what you were going to say about how we were going to do the top five. No, I was going to say, do you want to go first or do or do you want me to go first? Oh, I Our top five go college basketball champions over the last, I think we said, 40 years. I'm definitely going first, man. Okay, I'm go definitely ahead. going first. Go ahead. All right, man. Uh, I, just fin- I just finagled you into going first. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. No, no, go ahead. no. Real go quick. Ahead. No, real quick. No, no. I defer. You go first. I just finagled you and let me go first. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Tree. Bring my list up. Coming in at number five. Number five in the top five college Ooh. basketball national champions over the last 40 years. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good is one. Is the 94 Arkansas Razorbacks. They called them 40 minutes of hell. Nolan yeah. Richardson's team, they beat That's Duke, Scotty Thurman, Carlos Williamson. They come yeah. in at number five. Yeah. Coming in That's at number one. four, the Kentucky Wildcats, the 96 Kentucky Wildcats. Tony Delk, Antoine Walker, Walter McCarty, uh, Patino was the coach, and they beat Syracuse. Coming in at number three on my list is the Duke Blue Devils from 92. They yeah. beat the Fab Five. Bobby yep. Hurley, Grand Hill, Christian Leitner. That's my number three team. Number two, yeah. my mm. Georgetown Hoyas. All right. Mm. They beat Houston. Akeem Olajuwon. They had Fred Brown, Michael Jackson, David Wingate, and Patrick Ewan. And the number one college basketball champion over the last 40 years is the UNLV Running Rebels. <laughs> Well done. That's a good list. Stacy Augman, Anderson Hunt, list. Larry Johnson, Greg Anthony. You beat that top five, sucker. Right. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you put UNLV in your top five because they did They're not number win. One. They're number they one. Did not, they did not win the championship. They did win the championship this year. What are you talking about? You can't tell me about my list. Um, they played for it twice. They lost one. They won one. Okay. Um, <laughs> that year when they had... Larry Johnson, Greg Anthony, Stacey Augman, Anderson Hunt, and George Ackles. They lost to Duke. Maybe, maybe it's a different team. No. UNLV beat Duke in 90. I don't know. There's another year they went and they lost. Okay. Well, uh, all right. Listen, my, my list is a little bit different. Uh-huh. Um, at number five, the Georgia Tech 1990 squad, the Yellow Jackets, Lethal Weapon 3. Um. Yeah, and they only made it to the final four. They weren't a champion. Wait, team. wait, stop, 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 stop. Um, uh, wait, wait, uh, wait. Kenny wait. Anderson as a freshman. Kenny Anderson, uh, 3D Dennis Scott from the district. Uh, Brian Oliver, Malcolm Mackey was a freshman. I believe he's still the <laughs> Georgia Tech rebound champion of all time. And of course, the great Johnny McNeil was also on. Should that we put the list back up? Should we put the list back up? All right, um, at number four, hey, man, one of the best teams in college basketball history, the Fab Five. All right, Jalen Rose, Chris Webber, Jawan Howard, Jimmy King, and Ray Jackson. I know you remember that starting five with Michigan. And no, they didn't win. They only went to the Final Four, but still an amazing team. Still an amazing team, and they deserve. Did you you just sacrifice yourself, man, to to make me win again? Georgia Tech didn't win the national championship. They, d- they deserve to be talked about, man, the Fab Five. All right, number four, man, the 1991 UNLV team, they went 34-1, and one, ended up losing to Duke <laughs> that year, as you spoke about earlier. Larry Johnson, Greg Anthony, Stacey Augman, Anderson Hunt, uh, George Ackles. Uh, everyone knows that them boys was in Vegas, man, and the only reason why they didn't win that game was because they probably decided to throw that game because they got paid, okay? Allegedly, allegedly. Had to say that. And, man, uh, as we get to the final two teams, that Duke team, man, 2012, what? I'm sorry, that Kentucky team, 2012, Anthony Davis, Terrence Jones, Michael Kid Gilchrist, uh, <laughs> Deron Lamb, and Marquise Teague. Uh, honorable mention goes to Darius Miller, who came off the bench. Great Kentucky team, man, one of the best teams I've ever, ever seen play. <laughs> uh, they were the title champs that year. And last but not least, the number one team on my list, a little bit different than Doug's list, but on my list, 2001, Duke versus Arizona. Jay Williams, Shane Battier, Carlos Boozer, Mike Dunleavy, and Nate James were the starting five. 
in that game, and they won it all. That's why they're my number one team, the 2001 <laughs> Duke team, when they beat Arizona that year. Y'all give it up for me. Hey, give it up for me. You do you yep. do know Georgia Tech didn't win the national championship, right? They didn't yeah. win it. They should have. They should have. <laughs> they should have. They should but look have. at the instructions. The instructions clearly say national well, and, champions. And Wait a minute. Pull the list back up. I think it was another one that didn't win it either. Pull it back up, Trey, well, please. Well, there, were, there, were, there were quite a few that didn't Miami win it. Miami fam. UNLV. UNLV in 91. They made. No, they didn't the win only, it in 91. They lost in 91. The, the, the only two. The and they won it in 90. Won. The team that I said. It's not about It's not all about titles. Have it's not all about drinking? titles, man. But that it's was the category. That was the list. Uh, you changed it. You changed it. And I have had I a little bit of Southern. I did not change it. I did have a little bit of Southern Edge tonight. <laughs> I did. So, Tree, Tree, can you come on for a second? Can, can you come on for a second? I'm going to win this one. <laughs> Do I? Maybe. Okay, Tree. What's so funny? What's so funny, Nothing, tree? nothing, nothing. Ryan, you are going to win. Yeah. Tree, I Tree. Agree. I agree. <laughs> to, to, yes. For the sake of time, maybe mm -hmm. we not even put this top five up for, for the listeners to go on. Shut up! Because clearly, what are you laughing at? Clearly, clearly, he's point shaving. He's I'm point sorry. shaving. Somebody can... is betting on our top fives, and Ryan bet on me to win. Watch, watch what happens. Oh Lord! Watch what happens. Don't watch what happens. Y'all will see. I know what, what I'm you... doing. You got three teams that didn't win the national championship. But listen, the, the instructions uh, uh, clearly said the top five national champions from the last 40 years. Watch the votes come in. you questioned me on one of the teams that I clearly researched and knew the year that they won the national championship, the 90, uh, 90 UNLV running Rebels. Loose Neck said, we are the champions, Ryan. Ryan's list, we are the champions. Thank you, Loose Neck. Vote for me. Make sure your friends log on and vote for me also, Loose Neck. Appreciate hey, it, man. Y'all want to keep y'all want to keep this thing respectable, right? I mean, do the right thing. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to belabor the point. You had three Listen, teams that didn't win a national I, championship when you. But those lived. are three. Those are three of the most favorite teams in college <laughs> basketball history. It's not all about winning. Y'all, y'all get your, y'all get, y'all get all caught up in the winning, winning, winning. It's not all about winning. Look at this. Did I you mean, have? A, did you have a gummy before the show? You had one of those before the show? No question. <laughs> Today I took a jail cap. It wasn't a gummy. Shouts out to the good folks that did. did, did James Cooper, Ron nailed it in. He's throwing the ball. I'm telling you, you got you must be wagering on this, man. And, and you point shaving. And, and shouts out to the Georgia Hemp Company, man. Um, that's the way I do, you know, get my gummies <laughs> and my jail caps. Listen, man, I mentioned three of the most wildly Known teams in college basketball that, history. The question wasn't the three most, five most three. widely named teams. Lethal no. Weapon 3, everybody in Atlanta going to vote for me, man. They all know I, Dennis I Scott, Brian Oliver, and Kenny Anderson, man. Yeah, I don't I don't even think we should even go through with this. Can we just go ahead and give me a check mark right now for, for win number no, six? No, let, let the voters vote. Judging by There's nothing to vote for. You didn't even follow the rules. You didn't even follow the rules. Shout out to you, Lewis. Thank you. Lewis is voting for me. Thank you. Yeah, man, y'all get y'all get caught up. Listen, there's only one professional athlete on this show. That's me. I don't get caught up in the winning. I don't get caught up in the winning. What do you mean you don't get caught up in the winning? It's, it's bigger than winning. Sometimes it's bigger than winning, man. You got to make a so point. So losing is bigger than winning? Not following the rules is bigger than, than winning? Hey, what man, do you? I don't understand what you're saying. That UNLV team was the most heralded UNLV team. And probably all the college. And when you talk about they college lost basketball, the team you pick lost. Uh, would, would you stop cutting me off and listen for a second? When they talk about college basketball, sir, the Michigan Fab Five will go down in history as one of the most wild, widely known teams in the history of college basketball ever. Hey, Amen. Even even back before black people was playing basketball. Hey, listen. They knew they knew about the Fab Five from Michigan. From uh, Truck D, he says, lovable losers, Ryan's list. <laughs> I'm really starting to think, man, that your time on that very, very bad Georgia Tech team your last year and all your years in Detroit, y'all were horrible, that losing has kind of attached itself to you on these polls. 
No, 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 that's not the case. That's I mean, case. I, I'm trying to come up with a, a, a plausible explanation. You picked three teams that didn't win a national championship. But three great college <laughs> basketball teams. That has to count for something. That has to mean something. Hey, can we get out of here, man? It's time to go. I'm, I'm going mean, to I'm gonna put this up as soon as we're done. I'm going to put this poll up. Within 30 minutes, it's going to be Real up. Real quick, the Lethal Weapon 3 is hands down one of the most known basketball squads in Georgia Tech history. Kenny Anderson as a freshman, man? As a freshman? And then you had the nerve to argue me down about my list. They didn't win it. They didn't win it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was saying. Before we went to this poll, that's what I was saying. It's going to be hard for you to beat me and some of these things because... You know, I'm older than you, and I remember Nigga, I just stuff beat you. you. I just beat you. What do you mean? I just won a poll. I just won a poll. All right, what Steve, are you talking you about? I'll have the poll up. I'll have the new poll up within the next 30 minutes. Y'all please go in there and vote. Tell people. Make sure you go and follow the show on YouTube, 2 Live 2's, YouTube.com, or on Facebook, 2 Live 2's, Facebook.com. Follow on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, real quick, man. I want to talk about Caleb Williams for a second, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. You do realize that a lot of his success probably came because he played in the Pac-10, Pac-12, whatever it was. Yeah. And defenses, they don't play any defense. Yeah, they don't play defense out there. I was thinking about that the other day, man. So you starting um, to think that they made it, they're, they're making a mistake? No, no. And they He's might be making the a mistake. Guy to take. Okay. He's clearly the guy to take, but he didn't have no pressure coming down his back. Yeah. While he was like playing he's going to be in the league. Was, right. 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 You got you got six, seven, 280 pound guys running four fives in the National Football League, man. Right, right. He's not gonna be able to just dance around in the backfield for seven to ten seconds and throw the ball all the way down the field and let somebody catch it. Keep that in mind. From uh from Country Road says Ryan, uh, you went to tech or you went to school at tech with my aunt. Don't nobody talk about that team like you, but y'all. <laughs> Seriously, man, the team that you're talking about, yeah. Lethal Weapon well, Three, they're like people talk about them in Atlanta, but I've never heard anybody from any other city talk about Lethal Weapon Three. I'm hey. just gonna be honest with you. If his aunt went to school with me, what I wonder what her name is. <laughs> Don't do it. I see it huh? in your eye. You gonna try to make nope. a jab and say you had, nope. you know, you, nope. you 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 rabbit dance with his aunt. Don't do that. Nope. That's not nope. good. What I do guarantee, man. what I do guarantee is if his Don't aunt was at school with me. We watched that game together. I guarantee that. I guarantee it. Yeah, maybe because all, it was like 30 black people at Tech. Y'all stuck together. <laughs> That's why y'all watched it together. I understand that. Let's get out of here, man. Let's get out of here. I mean, hey man, we just, give we a great just, thank you. We just ended the show on a. A great thank you to the good folks from Southern Edge. Southern Edge Beverage. CO.com is the website. Make sure you check them out. Um, three teams make sure you follow different. us on social media also when it comes to Southern Edge. Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. Follow Southern Edge on social media so you will be invited to all of the good times when the good times start to roll, which will be towards the end of April. We're going to have a get-together and a gig towards the end of April. Y'all stay tuned. Thank you for a very good job, Tree. We appreciate you, Tree. Well done. You can't do Thank gummies you before the show, man. You just can't do the gummies before the show because it's affecting your work. You can't pick three teams that didn't even qualify for the rankings, man. I mentioned three of the greatest teams in college basketball. Can you history. read? Can you read the top? What does it say in yellow? R read read what it says in yellow. Ryan's top five college basketball teams: number five, Georgia <laughs> Tech; number four, my, what? And you dyslexic. You dyslexic, and you high off gummies during the live show. You dyslexic, you high on gummies, you drink okay. Southern Edge, you a wreck, man. You are a wreck. I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here. Let's, let's shut this down. Uh, we see y'all Thursday night, dogs. Uh, uh, Stewies, we see y'all Thursday night, man. We appreciate y'all hanging out. Y'all pass the word, please. Make sure you follow us on YouTube and subscribe to the page. We'll be back on Thursday night, man. Okay, this is experience. Appreciate y'all. Like the white boys. Peace. <laughs>